Hello everybody, welcome aboard and of course a warm welcome back to our frequent flyers as well. Today we're heading into the new Aerosoft Mega Airport Brussels Airport with the ICAO code of Echo Bravo Bravo Romeo in Microsoft Flight Simulator for a pre-release preview of this new scenery releasing on the 20th of April 2022 in the Aerosoft shop. It's been created by Joe Allend, a widely respected fantastic developer within the flight simulation community and looks to be exceptionally detailed as well. As always, click like, click subscribe and share your thoughts in the comments section below too. Now, we won't be exploring everything the scenery has to offer but rather we'll be checking out some of its key features so that you can take a look at all of the rest within your own simulator too and discover some of the great animations and features this airport scenery has to offer yourself. Brussels National as it's also known, is located 12 kilometers northeast of Brussels and in 2019 served close to 25 million passengers, finding itself clocking in as the 24th busiest airport in Europe. It has three runways, two of which are parallel to one another and the longest being over 3,600 meters long. And it also has a crosswind runway 01 and 19, which we'll be using for our arrival today. Aerosoft's Brussels is a dynamic airport with scenery scripted to bring the airport to life, including animated passengers throughout the terminals, airport ground vehicles moving around in a more realistic fashion as well, and on some of the floodlights or balls, you'll find the new apron warning system. The apron warning system is basically a traffic light system for apron workers during periods of strong winds or gusts, thunderstorms, or indeed snowy or icy conditions as well and it will display an orange, red or blue light accordingly depending on the conditions. They've also added some dynamic hangar doors too at the TUI and Lufthansa hangars alongside ramp gates in a few places too. They automatically open and close as you approach or leave the area. What's quite nice too is that the TUI hangar is scripted to be a bit random as well uh, therefore bringing it to life that little bit more. What really brings this airport to life even more is the fantastic VDGS system they've implemented, which runs via a separate executable file. We'll take a little bit more of a detailed look at this later. One thing that's certainly worth noting is that most of the runways are equipped with ILS approaches and RNAV approaches, except for the 07s left and right, which only have the option of a VOR approach. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Brussels. The developers have added custom ground textures, really nice uh, taxiway markings, custom signs as well as you guys can see here as we vacate the runway. So here we are. We're near to the sort of 160 to 70 stands and we're going to go ahead and park. We've activated the VDGS module within the Aerosoft programs and my hotkey for that is Shift and V. Selecting that opens a pop-up and we can select which apron we're going to park on. So we're going to go for apron 1 and then using something like uh, Navigraph charts we can find if we're going to have one north or one south and uh, say for example stand 161 is where we're going to park we want one south and we can go ahead and just find the stand there we go so we've selected it it's disappeared so with that in mind a little bit of power and we're going to creep over towards our stand we're going to get a number of different things pop up Initially, we're going to see weight appear. There's 161, so uh, we can see that the VDGS is already active. And it doesn't say weight. In fact, we've already got the rolling arrows, the rolling markers. And it says A320 on the top now as well, so it's got our aircraft type. So it's already initialized, and we know that uh, it's ready to receive us, basically. 
We're going to get too far, stop, OK and slow appear potentially. We're going to start to work towards turning in. And there is a setting inside the options which uh, actually moves the jetty into position if uh, when we get the engines turned off. Okay, so we've come to a stop early. What that's done is it's told us that we're too far away. It also does some magic when you're turning around uh, to depart. So we'll have a look at that shortly. So it's rolling us down. Look at that animated door there as well. One, six, one, two, stop. Holding the brakes, we're gonna set park brake on and it's given us the okay. What the VDGS has then done, it's given us the time that we're on blocks in Zulu with the air temperature as well, which is really cool. So, oh, what about departures? Again, if you're spawned in or even if you've flown into Brussels, you're going to complete a turnaround and head back. Hit your hotkey of Shift V and you can select your gate. What you can do as well is press the flight plan icon here. Available VDGS items. So hit flight plan. It says destination IATA code LHR. And... Uh, off blocks time in Zulu, of course, would be 13:45 roughly uh, as an estimated time for our departure. And once we hit that, you can see the VDGS is giving us our off block time, and it's giving us a countdown as well, showing us we're minus 24 minutes from push at 13:45 Zulu, which is 14:45 uh, UK time, British summer time. It will flick then across towards the flight number and also the current time and your destination showing that we get our flight is to London Heathrow having just configured that inside the little pop-up menu. So yeah, exceptionally well detailed a bit of VDGS there and hopefully that's something that you guys are going to absolutely love because it is a fantastic bit of work that they've uh, done to add this feature into the sim. Taking a look inside the terminal then we can enjoy animated passengers and some incredibly nice glass textures too within the building. The actual terminal building itself is exquisite. It's really nicely created. Very highly detailed, beautiful textures. Very good levels of detail within the scenery. We're going to spend a couple of minutes smooching around the airport within the terminal buildings. So I hope you guys enjoy the next few minutes. Highlighting some of the uh, work that Joe and the Aerosoft team have done in uh, creating a rather remarkable bit of scenery. The travelators within the buildings are also animated. And some of the passengers are scripted in such a way that they use them to make their way around the terminal too, which is a really nice thing to see. You get the feeling that it's very much alive as you make your way through the terminal building from this kind of top-down point of view. There's a lot of hustle and bustle, there's people moving around, there's passengers sat by the seating areas. It's an exceptionally detailed, realistic rendition of this airport. One thing that stands out particularly well is the reflective marble-like floors reflecting on the glass and the signs as well. We'll see a little bit more of that through the night textures when we take a look at that. It's remarkably good. Moving out towards the coaching areas. Studied this over the last 20-30 minutes or so and I've watched a lot of the ground vehicles interact with the road networks in and around the airport very accurately. They're all following the correct routes, the correct lanes and they're all driving around with realistic speeds. Passing the Sheraton Hotel then, we can see here quite clearly that the landside areas are just as detailed than the airside areas and in some senses 
as well you can see here a clear demonstration over the car park the amount of work that has gone into creating this scenery a lot of car parks in some sceneries show cars just placed in random areas random places and random positions as we make our way over the top of this car park we can see that each and every vehicle has been placed intentionally within a bay to give it that highly realistic accurate look In a different part of the airport then lies the Tui Hangar, one of the key animations of this scenery. When you move close enough, or indeed if it hits a random scripting time, the doors will open as you guys can see here at the moment, and the 737 inside will be revealed. The engineering team will then push it back out of the hangar with the wing walker, and it's a really nice, remarkable animation polish off this fantastic scenery created by uh, the Aerosoft team Joe Erland. At night time then it's just as exquisite and these are some of the most remarkably nice emissives that I've seen on buildings inside Microsoft Flight Simulator so far. And as we pan around over the car parks, you can see just how good the night lighting is at this Aerosoft Mega Airport Brussels scenery. Checking the inside of the terminal at night time then, we're in the uh, Bravo gates. And again, this particular area of the airport enjoys travelators, uh, animated travelators, animated passengers, whether they be walking around or in motion whilst seated, giving them their lifelike look, but also incredibly nice reflective textures all throughout as the uh, lighting reflects off that wonderful marble floor in all of the terminals in fact. Of course, there is a lot more to this scenery as well, but I don't want to show you guys everything. It releases on the 20th of April. It's a wonderful bit of scenery, some of the best that is currently available inside Microsoft Flight Simulator. So I hope you've enjoyed this little sneak preview and a bit of a feature review as well, showing you some of the features that are going to be available within the scenery when it does release. As always, share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe as well if you've not done so already. Of course, if you want to get your hands on this remarkably good bit of scenery coming very soon to Microsoft Flight Simulator, then all the links will be in the description down below and you'll be able to purchase it from the Aerosoft shop. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'd love to see you tune in soon for a future live stream. Take care.